Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this RegGamerTator.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Vega 8, specifically news that this particular graphics chip in the Vega lineup is going to be utilising DDR4 memory. That's right, no HBM2 for you, my friend. Then we'll discuss Epic, specifically news that two new benchmarks have been broken by AMD's new latest and greatest server CPU. Let's start things out with Vega 8, shall we? Seems like a good idea. So Vega 8 is going to be debuting in the HP Envy X360. This, of course, comes with a Ryzen CPU, specifically Ryzen 5 2500U, packaged as an APU with Vega 8 Mobile. So Vega 8 Mobile comes, amongst other things, with 8 Vega NCUs, um, 256 megabytes of DDR4 memory, and a pretty paltry 12 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's right, not exactly setting the world alight. The HP Envy 360, however, also comes with four, um, 8 gigabytes excuse me, of DDR4, so most likely 256 megabytes of that is allocated towards the Vega 8 graphics chip. What about performance? Well, not amazing. Uni Engine Heaven Benchmark 4 scores just 747 points. This is with 1024 by 768 resolution, with a quality of ultra and tessellation of extreme, but no anti-aliasing. So enjoy those extreme jaggers at that particular resolution. Indeed, I suddenly feel like I'm playing Quake 2 back in the late 1990s with my Voodoo 2 setup. Anyway, um, Fire Strike, meanwhile, scores 2,455 with the graphics, physics at 8,574 and combined at 816. Not amazing scores, I'm sure you'll admit, considering this barely pips the 840M GPU by NVIDIA, which debuted back in early 2014, so almost, you know, four years old now, that particular GPU. But don't forget that this particular solution is an APU, not discrete. Now, I grant you that this information is quite interesting in and of itself, but to me, the biggest piece of news here is the fact that Vega does not, which I think most of us did suspect, but it does not require the inclusion of HBM. So what does this mean? Well, I don't know yet, because honestly, we don't know AMD's roadmaps, and I don't think we're going to see a mid-range Vega GPU released this year by any stretch of the imagination. However, we do know, of course, about the Die Shrink version of Vega, which supposedly is going to be hitting next year. We've talked about that multiple times, so I don't want to retread too much of old ground in this video. Uh, you can, of course, search for that on this channel, and it will pop right up. However, what it does tell me is it most likely will see a GDDR5 slash 5X or possibly even 6 variant of Vega. Now this could be very exciting for a couple of reasons. The first is that, well, it might reduce the cost of the GPU. The second is that it also might serve as a way to encourage um, AIBs to produce a custom variant of the card. We know HPM2 has been a real thorn in the side of that especially with the ridiculous pricing. And the other reason, quite frankly, HBM2 is not really a requirement for games at the moment. And it would also uh, allow uh, AMD to be able to produce uh, like mid-range variants of the card as well, which would definitely be a fairly nice bonus. Of course, this obviously means there's going to be redesigns on the memory control and other bits and bobs. And there are some downsides of the shift towards HBM2, once again, this is somewhat out of the remit of this video, but for those who don't know, quick, too long, didn't read, HBM2 does require a lot less power. Depending on the configuration, it's been estimated, a guesstimate actually is a better way of describing it, that you're saving about 100 watts of uh, energy, which is actually an awful lot considering Vega is a very power-hungry little ch little kitty indeed, and quite honestly, I see why AMD decided to allocate that energy to the actual GPU uh, rather than the memory. So with the die shrink, it's possible that with a fairly reasonable bus, especially if they're using GDDR6, which is once again a little more power efficient than GDDR5 or 5X, it's possible that they won't need to worry so much, especially with a process shrink 
if they can run the clock speed around the same, uh, maybe a little bit more. I don't think they're going to add in additional compute units, but that's my speculation on that. From what I'm hearing about the roadmaps, they're not going to do that. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a solution which has GDDR5 or 5X or 6, and once again, slightly higher core clocks. Let's, for the sake of argument, say that they add an extra 100 to 200 megahertz at the minimum. And perhaps with a few other tweaks as well, we'll see the Vega uh, silicon morph into something which allows for more stable clock speeds, which of course would mean more stable slash higher performance overall. Next up, we'll talk about something epic, if you excuse the pun, and that is something which is a joint collaboration of HPE, which by the way is the enterprise arm of HP computers and AMD's Epic processors. The two companies have managed to break a couple of records, which is the Spec Crate 2017 FP base and the Spec FP Rate 2006 benchmarks. So what's going on here? Well, this is thanks to the DL385, which is a dual processor 2U rack mount chassis with 24 drive bays. And therefore you can have up to 64 Zen cores, 128 threads, 4 terabytes of DDR4 and 128 PCI lanes. 24 NVMe drives, or if you prefer more traditional route, 20, sorry, 30 uh, 2.5 inch SATA SSDs. And finally, you can also plonk in five single slot GPUs as well. So, of course, AMD have been very boastful and a very short quote from the company. AMD is proud to deliver to HPE a superb balance of high performance cores, memory and I.O. for optimal performance with AMD Epic. This is according to Scott Ayla, Corporate VTP and GM Enterprise Business Unit at Advanced Micro Devices. With AMD Epic, the HPE ProLine DL385 Gen 10. These names, these names, everyone, can support more virtual machines per server, process more data in parallel, directly access more storage, and while more securely protecting your data, for those who don't know, it, with the latter quote, or sorry, latter part of the statement, is referring to the AMD Secure Processor, which enables encrypted memory. Basically, this allows different virtual machines to have essentially encryption keys. So, in a, essence, you're isolating a virtual machine from one another. So, if you have a malicious user on VM1, VM2, VM3, VM4, and so on will not be affected and you can't basically snoop and pry into the data. At least in theory, it does have some weaknesses, but it's certainly more secure than not having this. And with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.